Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full detail. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Nothing but the truth. Another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, First letter I ever written 17 years since the last time I filed a gold claim in Nogales. Name's Tioga Tom, only honest man left in the West. If you ever heard of the castle I live in out by the desert, then you know what these railroad tickets are for. So come see me, but you don't know anything else, understand? Trouble you fellas, you jump on conclusions. Think nobody else is smart but you. If you think I need help, then you're crazier than the people in Cactus Junction. And I ain't spit in their direction since WPA. But I do need a mite of assistance regarding the arrest of a culprit. I'm a man everybody tries to pester on account of how rich they think I struck it. But me, I like my privacy and I aim to maintain it. P.S. The culprit I make reference to is the one who stole or made disappear or killed my dog. Only botheration is, it was my C&I dog. Like a chicken leg, dearie. I brought a whole fryer along with some hard-boiled eggs. You know how trains are. Oops. Excuse me while I just get my valise on the rack here. It's all right. I'll move my coat. Only this... Yes, is... you came all the way through from the city, huh, dearie? Claire Brooks, it says on the baggage thing. Oh, my, that's a nice name. I had a boarder named Brooks once, but he died with his kidneys, poor darling. How you like our town, Cactus jun- Junction? It ain't much, uh, look, is it? Please, excuse me, but really, this seat is... There crazy. we are. I guess there's no room for my hat, though. Have to jab it in across the aisle. Mind me to keep my eye on it. You never know. So now, let's Hurry eat. Up, well, I- I'm awfully sorry, madam, but I'm trying Go to... Go on, to dearie. Be- there's plenty of chicken for both of us. Oh, but I had the most awful time wringing its neck. Oh, you should have seen me. I chased him all around the oh, yard. Oh, no. I, I said, will you please not sit down here? The seat is taken. Oh, George. George. Yeah, here I am, Angel. Well, if I'd known you was that tight. Oh, that's all right, lady. Sit still, sit still. Look, George. Going out for a smoke. Have a nice time, Brooks. Oh, George. Isn't he sweet after all? Now, my name's Carmichael, dearie, and let me tell you about this chicken. Good. Let it go, Jake. Well, here we go, Mr. Valentine. Last stop before Emory Switch. Emory Switch. That's where we get off, huh, conductor, for Tom's? Yep. Two, three-mile walk, I guess, up the hill. But there's a moon tonight. Road around the back way, but of course it's its father. Uh-huh. Kind of a lonely spot for a blind man, isn't it? Yeah, desert rat with money. <laughs> Probably never let a doctor touch him in his life. Seen him out there once just a couple of weeks ago. He was plumbing along, hanging on to his dog. Doesn't and... like people, huh? Oh, there's an old Oriental been with him for years, if that's what you mean. Po Singh, cook and bottle washer. Which increases, Tom, is. The whole fortune might have paid in his castle, they say. <laughs> eh, I can't feel too sorry for him. Tioga Tom, last honest man in the West. <laughs> says him. Well, you'll be the first visitor up there for a long time, I guess. Maybe you can get your hands on some of that gold. Underway now. Hey, save me enough. Hey, wait, wait for me. Hey, stop Oh, train. conductor, there seems to be a guy out here. Hey, Never make it, will he? Always somebody too late for a train. Huh? Ridiculous. Shows a man's got no efficiency. I'm never late. Hey, wait, will you? Hey, wait. Well, come on, let's give him a hand. He's drinking, too. Can't even run straight, you see? Yeah, help me, fellas, will you please? Here, let me reach. Now, now, here, I can reach him. Oh, gee, thanks. Go home. Easy, there. Couldn't even hang onto my hand. Don't know why we bother. He's liable to fall. Get out of the way, friend. I'll get him. Here we go, boys. Come on up. Here we are. Oh, gee. Oh, thanks. Sorry to be in trouble, but in the bar, everybody... 
lot is so nice they couldn't get away. Okay, and, okay, friend. Uh, you made it all right. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, here's your uh, hat over here. My name's uh, Loosefoot. Want a drink? Why? Uh, Loosefoot, uh, the name. Somebody just give it to me, I guess. I don't remember. Yeah, come on, come on. Have Wait a, a minute, scepter, you huh? it too. You hey, look, it fell off your hat. Take it. Here, give me that. Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, it's sure nice of you, hey, pal. Emery uh, Switch, it's uh, Yeah, didn't it? Oh, oh, sure, sure. I, I'm a necktie salesman. Got a few samples for the switchman who worked there. That's all. Well, thanks again, and, and, and you too. I... Where'd the other guy go? Back in the car, I guess. Oh, well, uh, thank him for giving me a hand, will you? I mean, thanks. I sure... Appreciate yeah, it. sure. Uh, Only didn't you notice, Loose Brain? What that other guy tried to give you was a shove. I didn't shove him, Mr. Valentine. I just didn't help him much. I didn't want him on the train. What of it? Well, Mr. Flannery, I don't know. I'm just curious. Perfect right. Perfect. His name's Loosefoot. You know him? Who doesn't? I've done business in Cactus Junction. Lawyer. Coming this time from the city, though. As far as Emery Switch, huh? You too, maybe, huh? And why not? Now, Loosefoot's the kind of a person who's always in the way. Son of an old partner of Tioga Tom's, or claims to be. Always claiming to have a claim on him. Oh? Why are you going? What's your claim, Mr. Flannery? Never ask a lawyer a direct question, young man. <laughs> Spoken like an ambulance. Eh? Or presume on a man's guilt before it happens. Now, I haven't really seen Tom since before he lost his eyesight. Many's the time I've handled his legal affairs. Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean, guilt before it happens? What happens? What's going on tonight? You and Loosefoot. That makes three of us headed for the same place to visit a guy nobody ever visits. And all on the same night. Why? Oh, you too, eh? <laughs> well, well. What's your angle? You need counsel, say so. You don't leave me alone. Why should I say why? <laughs> I tell you this, though. There's four, not three. Huh? His common law wife for six months back in 1917. Or she says she was, but that's her claim. Not a bad one. You mean Tioga Tom? That big overdeveloped appetite out there in the coach. Notice her eating fried chicken. A woman, Mr. Valentine, who'd wring your neck for a favor, but charged to tell you the time. The widow Carmichael. My land, yes. That's where I live in Cactus Junction. Just to be near the poor dear. 33 years I've waited. The one true love of my life. All right, so you're going to see him too, but would you... Four of us? Four of us? My, I think it's just friendly. That's what I think. Only even with my shoes on, it counts to five to me. Ain't that so, Cousin Henry? Ah, who's cousin? Well, I guess it does, widow. Well, George, he's some sort of a cousin of Tioga Town. Mother's side it was. Never very close, but... Blood's always thicker than water. The way I was raised. If you can't miss Brooks. Here, it's six of us, ain't it? Hi, Olga. Now, he never liked crowds. Family trade. I told them we were going up to do a magazine story on him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But the rest of you, Mrs. Carmichael, will you please... I don't hold no secrets. I'm sure you don't. I ain't afraid to speak up. Remember, blood's thicker than strangers, too, widow. And to whom is bereavement a secret? What? what? Oh, but he'll be well again. I know he will. I brought along my nursing things. It's my opportunity as well as my duty. It's the telegrams, Mr. Valentine. We all got them. Even that loose foot up in the bar car. Where Tom's nearest. Bless his adorable old soul. Now, 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 widow. The telegrams? But I don't know Down why... Down this should... evening, miss. From uh, Po Singh, that heathen up the castle. Here, read for yourself. Oh, thanks. Boss, very bad. Fall down, very bad. Come quick, please. Signed, Po Sing. Boy, it's very bad. A blind man, and he's already had some kind of a fall. Emory Switch. Ten minutes stop, Emory Switch. Come on, Brooksy, I gotta get to a phone. <laughs> trap? What trap? What is it? Quiet, Angel. Oh, uh, some kind of trap. Oh, I know, Savvy. 
All the same, he mixed oh, up. Oh, for the love of... Look, Posting, I told you this is Mr. Valentine. I'm on my way out, but I want to find out what happened since Tom wrote me. Now, if you need a doctor or no, something... No, 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 no. Boss, he say doctor just for horses and descending he bills. Boss dying, that's all. What? Come quick, that's all. Boss is dying. <laughs> dying? Come on, Brooksy. Let's get our stuff off the train and get up there. I don't know what's going on. But, George, day before yesterday, a blind man's dog was stolen or killed him, and he has an accident. I know, I know. A rugged character who probably kept moving around, dog or no dog. Sure, somebody's up to something. A bunch of people. Haven't you realized what they are? Yeah, they all got telegrams. You know what I mean. They're the only people in the world, apparently, who have any sort of claim against Tioga Tom. They're nothing but vultures. Well, I'll go you one better, Angel. Say ghouls. Because you want to bet a guy like Tom has never made out a will? So if he did die, they'd all want to be handy to stake out those claims. Start grabbing for his gold. Yeah, they go, George. All walking out together. Yeah. About three miles up the hill, somebody said. Only suppose you and I just walk fast and beat him, huh? Let's get to Tom first. All right. Blue foot in the widow. Look, there's certainly a pair. Cousin Henry, he's as slow as they are. Characters, I tell you. But there's one who's not so slow. Hey, he's not with him. Who, Mr. Plummer? Yeah. Still in the compartment. Let's drag him along with us. I want to ask him about what he did with that seeing-eyed dog. Ask uh, him. George, what makes you oh, think I'm just he... guessing. I'll tell you later, Angel. Hey, Flannery, let's go. We're... George. Mr. Flannery's dead. Yeah. Murdered. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Listen to the difference. Yes, now you can actually hear authentic scientific proof of the difference between new RPM motor oil and premium type motor oils as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Auto engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings. And during operation, minute particles of radioactive metal wear off the rings. Geiger counters are thus able to detect the amount of wear actually taking place. Listen now as the Geiger counters click off the difference. First, the low wear rate of the new RPM. Now, the much faster wear rate of the conventional oil. Now, new RPM again. You have just heard authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engines between major overhauls due to lubrication. Proved in the laboratory and checked out in severe road service, new RPM motor oil is sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction. Ask for it at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Tioga Tom, the legendary man in the castle overlooking the desert. He thought he didn't need help, but that was yesterday when all that worried him was the disappearance of his seeing-eye dog. Once his protection was gone, something happened to Tom, an accident. And his only friend, Po Sing, says that he is dying, says, come quick. The vultures, the only relatives or ones with claims against Tom, they're gathering too. But if your name is George Valentine, you can't hurry to the castle quite as quickly as you'd like, because one of the vultures is dead. Yes, Mr. Flannery has been murdered. Holy brother of Macintosh, what are we going to All do? All right, take it easy, Conductor, take Some it easy. Some sort of a sharp weapon, George. Yeah, a little tiny wound in his throat. Yeah, but I got a train to worry about, and them people all scattered now. I better get on the telegraph. George, you said you had a hunch Mr. Flannery was the one who did something to the dog. Why? Oh, any of these people could have got at that dog. You know, Angel, it happened yesterday. It's only 15, 20 miles from Cactus Junction out to the castle. So they could have gone back and forth. Well, huh? what's on your mind? But Mr. Flannery told you he'd come all the way from the city, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Neat, sharp little guy, man with efficiency. How about that, did he? Well, I, I don't know. I don't remember. I, I'm so rattled that I, I can't tell. There's I, mud, well, clay on the bottom of his shoes and the instep. See it? I noticed when he crossed his leg and carefully creased his trousers. Mr. Valentine, wait till the sheriff... He'd been in the city the day before. How'd mud get there? I'm the kind of guy who'd have a shine before breakfast. Hey, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I got the stubs here. I... Yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. Flannery, compartment... 
But you're right. He just got on at Cactus Junction, just like the others. Uh-huh. So then maybe I'm wrong about the dog. Oh, George, now you're confusing me even worse. Well, why was he murdered? Who murdered him? Maybe somebody else did something, and he was up here snooping around and saw it. Quite an operator, you know that. That'd be a style. See something and just keep quiet. Hey, Al, you see him? No. Oh. See a little woman, a little wobbly guy, and a stiff-jointed slowpoke? I know, sure, I know. No, I didn't see him. I couldn't catch up. Already left the road, I guess. Took the trail up the hill. Oh, brother. This road run around the back side of the castle? Sure, about five miles up there. There's a place you Okay, can... stay and help the conductor, will you? Let me have your truck. Yeah. Well, he, he's got to get us off on the side and then... All right, all right. You guys to... worry about the train and the body. Come on, Brooksy. The ghouls are on foot. We can beat him. Yeah, sure. Only well, get that sheriff here fast. One murder's enough for tonight. Particularly if the second one should be me. Fits the description. Yeah. Up this way, I guess. Listen. Coyote. Oh. There's a rock wall here of some kind. Pretty crude, too. But... No, I can make it all right. Oop. Easy now. Yeah. Barbed wire. Guy really does like his privacy. George, in the moonlight, uh, that's the house way up there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Old ranch house. All run down. It was stone around it. And only one light. This door, I guess. Oh. Don't see anybody inside there. At least we're ahead of the others. Yeah. Uphill, it'll take him another half hour. Only George, the murderer, if he's one of them, wouldn't stay with the others. Wouldn't he run away? Oh, maybe whatever this is all about isn't finished yet. Here we are, Angel. I guess we walk right in. Oh. Kitchen. Living room in here, apparently. Yeah. Hello! Anybody here? Hey, Tom, where are you? This place is so empty, but it's clean. That must be his room. It's the only one that... Yeah, could... Maybe he's asleep, but... George. Hey, a man dying, but his bed's empty. He's gone. Yeah, yeah, he's gone. Huh? What? Oh, oh, Mr. Valentine. Hello. Hello, Miss. You're posing, but... Where's your... Tom, gone. <laughs> yes, gone. Now, look, friend, what is this? A man who takes a bad fall and is dying doesn't just disappear like that? Oh, Mr. Tom, say, Mr. Tom, gone. Now, now excuse me, hey, please. wait a minute. Where are you going? I get a cleaver knife. A what? Me, a cleaver. You sorry? Mr. Tom, say you must stay. Oh, he does, huh? The boss. Old Honest Tom says we should stay, huh? Suppose we don't. You going to use that thing? More better, I think you stay... Oh, sure. Okay. No, stay out. Stay out. Stay out. Stay out. Oh, brother. Valentine the sucker. Valentine George, the sucker. George, there's a fence down here the front way, too. Supposed to be a gate half a mile from the house. Yeah, and this was a path when we started out on it. Where the deuce did we lose it? Valentine the pathfinder, the boy oh, scout. Oh, George, you don't know yet. Hey, look out. Now, oh, easy there. We seem to be down in a gully. What? Yeah. The trail must be up there, George. To a bridge right up over us. Come on. Now, wait a minute. Wasn't what I was looking at. Sawdust. Huh? Yeah, sawdust. Scattered. All around here, too. Farther under the bridge. Seems to be just a little footbridge. Pretty far up there, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah sawdust has been here for a day or two. Wet. Fell here. And there's some on top of the cross piece, too. Yeah, I see it. Somebody said trap. Something up there has been freshly sawed, Angel. And anybody coming up the trail from the front gate would have to go across that bridge, wouldn't they? And it's so dark, they couldn't yeah, see. Yeah, come on. Get up there before somebody tries to walk across it. And... Oh, but... Look out! Where are you going? What? Bump into a man just sitting peaceful like that. Hey, hey. Woman's voice, wasn't it? Well, yes, couldn't you see it? Tom, Tioga, Tom, wouldn't you know? You wouldn't know anything. Who is it, Valentine? Yeah, I'm standing right here in front of you. You're sitting on a rock waiting for something to happen? Detectives all are thinking. Trouble with you, fella. But sitting nice and healthy, huh? The poor guy who had the bad tumble. Only honest man left in the West. And he gets his hired boy to send out telegrams saying he's dying. <laughs> had a tumble. Broke ten ribs back in 1922. 
Never told a lie in my life. So that's the way you stretch it. Poor dying Tom. Been dying since the day I was born. So have you. So now you're sitting here waiting to hear wood break, huh? Po Sing brings you out where you can, waiting to hear people tumble through that little trap you set up there. Pester me, every one of them. I told you that... I'm afraid we don't believe anything you told us. Told you I like my privacy. I aim to maintain it. Bunch of vultures, all pester me, looking for my gold. So you hire me See to... and I, dog, disappeared. Don't you think somebody's up to something? You jump on conclusions. Say, I had that bridge sword. Well, one of them did it. Like one of them did a murder, I suppose. Ain't interested in murder. Gonna die myself sometime. That's enough to worry about. Just trying to slow up the process, that's all. I steal my dog and then saw my bridge. Who do you think uses that bridge? I do. Even without my dog, I can find my way around this place, but I found him out. Yes, sir. Tom isn't gonna go down with a... Huh? Go on, Munchausen. Hold your tongue. Ain't you got ears? Well, yes, somebody's coming. I'm going to get up on that bridge before... No, this way. Hey! Hey, where am I? Who is that over there? Where's the trail? I can't see. Ah, my loving vultures. Tell everybody they're friends of mine can't even find their way around. Hello, Henry. Your voice, ain't it? Tom. <laughs> Better than a fiddle. What in the name of... Never mind. Where's the rest of them? Loosefoot and the lady. Oh, coming, I guess. We move kind of separate. Only that telegram, Tom. What kind of a stunt? Yeah, let me take your arm. Help me out. Quiet, Henry Loosefoot. Mrs. Carmichael. Another county you hear from. Could hear that one across three counties. Yeah, there she is, over on the other side. She's headed for the bridge. Come on. But, Hurry Tom, up and can't... get her. I'll oh, be all right. Mary, George, we can't get up there in time. We're on the wrong side. She's coming this way. Mrs. Carmichael, stop. Who is that? Where are Stay you? Stay where you are. Don't come across that bridge. Walk on it. Oh, it's you, dearie. I'm coming. Stop, I said. Stop, will you? Well, I can't stop till I get there, can I? Oh, Lord, she'll fall. Stop. My heavens, what's all the fuss? Oh, we... Out of the way, Angel. Let me see something. What's the matter with him? Oh, dearie, what a climb. And the wind blowing my hat off all the time. What are you trying to see, George? The girt is sawed half through, all right. But a board's been freshly nailed across to support it. George, but I who don't... could have nailed the board across? Tom and Poe Sing are the only ones up here. So Tom was telling the truth. Someone else saw it, and Tom had it fixed. Wait a minute. Mrs. Carmichael, where's your hat been? What? Yeah. When Flannery was murdered, little tiny wound. He was stabbed with something sharp. Well, how in blazes should I know where the pin is? George, she pinned her hat to the seat opposite us, the seat across the aisle. I remember it. Did I? Couldn't find it when I left the train. And the only person who would have noticed it or thought of using it was the one who sat down there. Cousin Henry. Yes, Cousin Henry. And George, he's down there with Tom. Wait a minute. What about Loosefoot? Where's he? Ran on ahead, I guess. He was the fastest. And the trail's easy mount. So we haven't seen him because he's probably already crossed this bridge. He's probably clear up at the house by now. But George, Tom is down there with sure, Henry. Sure, sure, with Henry. Don't you see, Angel? Tom wanted to know who killed his dog and sawed the bridge. That was the reason for the phony telegrams, this whole shindig. It was to get all the vultures up here and see which one of them wouldn't walk across the bridge. Henry. And five minutes ago, Tom discovered who was guilty. Well, uh, hurry up. Yeah, Henry. yeah, but quietly. Because now it's all backwards. Now the question is what Tom intends to do to Henry. There. There they are. And they're not moving toward the house, not moving at all. Tom's got a gun, George. He's hanging onto Henry's arm. Even a blind man could shoot somebody as long as he yeah, had Yeah, come on, around this way. Oh, Tom. Uh, well, come back, did you? Get down here, Mr. Valentine. This crazy... Shut guy... up, dog killer. You'll get your chance to grovel. He's a murderer, too, you say? Huh? Don't answer, Angel. Around the rock here. Yeah, that's right. Now, oh, come on. He's crazy. You're both crazy. Everybody comes pestering me. Well, it's going to stop once for all. Sure, he killed Flannery. Flannery's another pest. Nooping around the same day he was. Let go of me. Let go of me. Get your hand oh, off my... Oh, no, you don't. You move. The gun goes off. Okay, Tom. I'm here now, right beside you. You can hand me that gun. Uh -huh. George, you let go. He just let go. Oh, no, you, you... Look out. I'll get him. Give me that gun, I said. Where are you? Where is no, he? Oh, no, you don't. Detectives. Knocking my gun off. The sheriff will get him. Don't worry. I just got an idea. It might be good to save you from dying for a while, Tom. <laughs> Man's dying from the day he's born. Oh, sure. Honest Tom. Rugged independent. I know I hate that guy, but shooting him while escaping might not go down so well with a jury. Uh, just shooting wild? Uh, I couldn't actually... Well, 
It would have been just blind luck if I hit him, I mean. Oh, sure, sure, Tom. Be careful what you say. Don't want to tell a lie. Only honest man left in the West. Yep, that's me. Don't want to admit you might be a dead shot. Don't want to say right out to your blind. Even though that's how you suckered these people into coming after you. <laughs> but, George, he said... <laughs> Ain't a lie if a man always talks like he had to hear people to recognize him, is it? Ain't a lie to stumble around a few times you've seen, is it? Buster, you take the cake. <laughs> Honest as the day is short. Sure, we all jumped at conclusions, all right. Because I guess there's no law against a man with good eyesight owning a seeing-eye dog. like it. People don't like them. Well, you can leave for the castle pretty soon, Tom. Taking down your cousin Henry's confession now. Worthless bunch of bushes. Won't be pestered anymore. Sure, sure, Tom. You've got your privacy. You know, we did stop you from doing the one thing that really would have been wrong. Do I appreciate it? Obligations ain't for me, young lady. Well, the reason people pester you is because of your gold. And I thought maybe you'd tell us what... <laughs> Tell you a secret. Sure, I got barbed wire and fences, but I never actually said I have gold, did I? What? Oh, for the love... Oh, George, come on, let's get out of here. Jump on conclusions, like everybody else. Oh, that awful man. George, I want to go out someplace and go dancing and forget about it. Okay, spend my gold. Well, at least I know you haven't got any. <laughs> I'll tell you something that'll worry you for years, you notice? Tom didn't say he didn't have any either. Listen to the difference. In a few seconds, you'll hear Geiger counters measuring automobile engine wear. The engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings, which make it possible for the Geiger counters to detect wear as it occurs. You will hear authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engine between major overhauls due to lubrication. First, let's listen to the Geiger counter slowly click off the low wear rate of new RPM. Now the much faster wear rate of a premium type oil as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Now new RPM again. You have just heard Geiger counters clicking off the scientific proof that new RPM motor oil is years ahead. Yes, years ahead. New RPM doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Try it. Sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Herb Butterfield was heard as Tayoga Tom, Marjorie Bennett as Mrs. Carmichael, Joe Forte as Flannery, Tim Graham as Henry... Herb Vigran as Loose Foot, Victor Rodman, the conductor, and Charlie Lung, Po Sing. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>